Hey, what's up everybody? So I'm at the shop right now. I gotta start my day pretty soon. But first, I gotta feed some fish. We got a bunch of cool stuff in yesterday. Um, today's the first day that will be, um, what the heck? Well, he was excited to see me. He was jumping all up and down there. All right, I'm gonna get you food in a second. Hold on, bud. So as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. We got a big fish shipment in yesterday and we acclimated everybody, put them in their tanks, but today is the, their first morning. So I'm curious to see how everybody's gonna eat and uh, make sure everybody made it. So I'm gonna go through all these tanks that we have uh, all the way over there too. And we're gonna go through them all. And we're gonna make sure everybody's alive and doing well and feed some of these guys. Oh, for those of you that are curious, Paul Gaffaro's eel is still doing good. And I've been feeding him clams and he's been loving the clams. Look at that, look at how he just crushes that. He just crushed that shell. That's so awesome. So yeah, he's been eating clams. That's the only thing he's been eating. Now he's slowly making his way up to here because he thinks he's gonna eat again. Look at this guy. Look at him. All right. Look at you, buddy. Good morning to you too. Uh, no clams for you today. You need a water change. So I'm gonna scoop out some of this live brine we have here. Also have some red ogo for some of the herbivore fish, along with, uh, hmm, I guess we'll do some, uh, I guess we'll do some mysa shrimp. Ooh, we'll do some squid too. All right, we got our mysis and squid mixture here, our live brine here. Oh, it does not smell good. Oh. So I'm gonna start with all the fish, all the new fish that came in yesterday. I'm gonna try to feed them the live brine and see how they respond because I'm very curious. I know they've been stressed out after a long uh, trip. The live brine is very beneficial to them, but also it kind of, it stays alive and it stays in the water column a bit and they don't wanna eat when I'm there. The brine will swim around a bit and they can choose when they wanna eat. All right, so the first tank here has some antheus in there and some wrasse in the way, way back. And I think there's, uh, I think that there's a tang in here or something. So we'll go ahead and put this live brine in. Oh, Midas Blenny took it. The color on the antheus is just amazing. So it's looking like everybody's uh, looking lively and looking interested in the food, which is a good sign. Although the wrasse in the back uh, isn't doing too much, but oh, there it goes. The wrasse in the front got it. He's going to town on it. Oh, yeah, so everybody's moving. Everybody's looking interested in food. That's a good sign. Oh, look at the sailfin tang going at it. That's really good to see. Now here's another group of antheus and wrasse, and there's also a Randall goby in there. And let's see how they do. This is the benefit of having this uh, using live brine because, like I, like I said, if they're too nervous with me here eating, they can always eat on their own time. The brine doesn't pollute the water right away. Look at that pintail fairy wrasse up front. Look at you, you're a beauty. Oh my gosh, that's a gorgeous fish. Yeah, so everybody's looking good in here too. So now we have a, a male and a female trigger in here and a swallowtail angel. And the angel is eating. The triggers are a little bit more shy, so they're a little bit more hesitant to eat. And oh, there's a sailfin tank. I forgot about the sailfin tank. Uh, so yeah, sailfin tank's eating as well. Oh, so we got a wrasse here, another wrasse underneath that sponge filter. There are two more blue jaw triggers in this tank, a male and a female, they're paired. Um, an algae blending down there. So everybody looks kind of uh, like they're just laying there. Let's see if we can put some food in here and uh, get them excited like how this tank is. Oh, look at this, a pintail fairy wrasse came out of nowhere. There's another one in the back, an antheus in the back there that wants to come out, but it's a little nervous. Oh, and then the wrasse to the left there just popped out. And the trigger, go for it. Are you gonna go for it? Trigger's showing some interest. But again, those are very shy, but I have no doubt that once we leave, he'll, uh, well, he just got a piece. And got another one, cool. So those are all the new fish that we got in uh, just yesterday. They were looking healthy, they were looking good. The coloration on them is amazing. I'm very happy to see them eating. Oh, and I wanna show you these guys too. Check this out. So in this tank, we have some beautiful dragonette, mandarin dragonettes. Look at this, they're uh, hair too. So there's the male up front and then the female behind him. So not only do we have this pair, but then we have another pair in this tank with a little blood shrimp, the male and the female. Flame scallops are always awesome. These guys are badass. Another one back there. And there should be a male somewhere in here as well. 
all this chato. There's two more in here. I, I think we have a total of uh, three or four pair. I, I, I'm not sure. Right now they're in our invert uh, systems right now. They kind of fatten them up with all the pods in there. Check this out. It's one of my favorite fish. Look at this bird nosed wrasse. So he's been here for about uh, two weeks now, I believe. Um, so he knows the routine. So we'll go ahead and feed them some squid and some mice of shrimp. And a big old flamingy tang in there. We are holding them in this 125 gallon tank for now because the owner's tank sprung a leak. So he needed somewhere to put them. So we are holding them here for him until he gets a new tank. But just look at them go. Just a, a gorgeous set of uh, fish in here. All right, so I did my feeding. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get prepped. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw it to future me and he'll take it up from there. Thank you, past me. Looking good as always. Uh, I'm here at the client's house now and it is raining like crazy. Well, the situation we have is that we go to this customer every so often, he's not a regular. He called us out because he has a real bad uh, outbreak of cyanobacteria or, or red slime algae. It's all over his tank, he said, and uh, he's also having a battle with uh, hair algae as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys inside and let's see exactly what we are looking at. So here we are walking in and yeah, this is this is pretty bad. Uh, I mean, it's on the rock, it's on the sand. And by the looks of it, I can, it looks like there's hair algae underneath the cyanobacteria. Wow, it is everywhere, all on the sand, all throughout the coral. It's surprising because the coral does not look bad. I'm seeing a couple of dead urchin shells here. In the back was a lot of urchin shells, um, dead urchin shells, and oh, there's a couple of live ones here. There's a lot of urchins in here, so there's a lot of cleanup crew in here. Um, wow, wasn't expecting to see that. Uh, a little worried about this clam. I mean, it's it's out, but it's got some algae growing on the shell. We'll have to get rid of that. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, this is definitely worth um, <laughs> calling us out for. And look, that, co that coral's smothered in cyano bacteria and it's all that ganyapora is all tucked in so we definitely got our work cut out for us today um so i'm going to begin siphoning out with this little siphon to begin the process of getting it out so before i get started i just was curious uh what the nitrates were in the tank because low nitrates kind of equal um cyano problems so i did a nitrate test and here's the chart so the darker the color the higher the nitrates in the tank. Now, this is a, a low resolution test. This goes up to five, but you can dilute it. But I only did one through five, right? And uh, so the darker the color, the um, higher the nitrates. If it's clear, there's zero nitrates. It is clear. There's no nitrates in this tank at all. So one would look at that tank and be like, oh my gosh, there's algae everywhere. There's cyanobacteria. I gotta do a big water change. I gotta feed less, blah, 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 blah. Cause it's dirty, right? No, there's no nitrates in that tank. So I'm just going to gently, with my little siphon here, siphon off as much of that red slime as possible. But as I'm doing that, I'm starting to notice, if you look, there's some green hair algae definitely hiding underneath that. Um, but first things first, let's just try to siphon as much of the cyano out as we can, being careful of the coral. Um, it's good practice to at least try to get it out. At the end of the day, we still have to solve the water chemistry issue, but um, I just want to get as much out as possible for now. There's just so much of this stuff everywhere, even hiding behind there in those hard to reach uh, spots and low flow spots. And then there's just tons of hair algae that some of it's coming off. You can see it in the water column there. Some of it's coming off pretty easy. Uh, some of it's on there pretty good. The corals seem to be encrusting, Leptastria, Lepto. Um, those seem to be doing okay, but if we don't get rid of this hair algae, that's definitely gonna start to affect them. So I got my handy dandy toothbrush along with my grout brush right here for the harder to remove algae. Also noticing some of these corals look a little pale. That's definitely a sign of uh, low nitrates. So after a good scrub, I'm gonna go ahead and do a 50% water change. So for those of you that think that if you add a bunch of cleanup crew to your tank, that somehow it'll solve your green hair algae issue, uh, take a look at this. So we got one, two, 
three, four, five. We got five urchins that are dead, two turbo snails, and there's more in the bucket. So we can make a little urchin snowman. Yeah, it's not gonna help how many, how much cleanup crew you have uh, if you don't take care of the water chemistry issue. So here's where we are now. Um, I scrubbed the rocks the best I could. I got uh, as much of the red cyanobacteria out of here as possible and much hair algae as I possibly could, but you can just see there's still a bunch of, there's a bunch of free floating algae still in the tank, um, just kicked up by the filtration. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can only be here for so long, um, but it's gonna end up probably settling in the sand and then decaying and then kind of polluting the sand, which you can always gravel back that out, no big deal. Uh, I was just trying to get off the rocks for now, but uh, I siphoned as much of the cyanobacteria off as I possibly could. We are not doing a red slime treatment or a uh, chemi-clean treatment today. We will be doing that in a couple more days. Today was just kind of just trying to see what we were looking at and um, getting out uh, as much as possible and taking water samples and testing and seeing where we're gonna go from here. Definitely one of the things I'm gonna recommend is nitrate because you can see this uh, hammer coral right here. It's It seems very bright and like a neon color, but that's a little too pale. So it's kind of almost bleaching and that's because the night there's hardly any nitrate in the tank. Um, that should be darker. And we've already talked about the monopora. It looks a lot lighter in person. Um, the selepto right here, you can see spots right there that, I mean, it's encrusting, so that's a good sign, but it, it could use some little bit of nitrate. So last look here, uh, this monopora is very, very white bleaching here. And for the most part, the corals look okay, but they are starting to get smothered by the algae. Dunkin' coral looks good. This is just uh, a lot to still do. So that was just a quick visit, uh, just testing the water and seeing exactly what we're looking at. Going forward, uh, Tommy will be out here in a couple of days. We're gonna really focus on lowering the phosphates in the tank because I did test the phosphates and they were pretty high. We're gonna work on lowering the phosphates and then um, seeing if the nitrates will come up naturally, uh, possibly dosing nitrate, and just really focus on the water chemistry. I'm not so much concerned about anything else but getting that water chemistry right. Uh, the corals seem to be growing and, and doing well. We just need to knock out those nuisance algae. We, we prefer to kind of try to do things naturally. It does take a little bit longer, but it's more reliable because um, if you get the tank to where you need to be naturally, it tends to stay that way as opposed to using chemicals. All right, so I'm headed to the next job. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.